Hi everybody, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lottie and this is my November wrap up. November was probably my worst reading month of the whole year. I only read three books in November. I don't know, I just was not in the mood to read. Um, I've been really unwell during November. I had COVID again, I had a really horrible cold right at the start of the month. So it was only really towards the end of the month that I started to like feel better and I just was in a bit of a slump. I don't know. Um, I just wasn't in the mood to read really. Um, I was playing a lot of Persona 5 Royal um, and other than that I wasn't really doing anything. <laughs> um, I didn't even really do YouTube during November so um, I feel like the two kind of coincided. Um, I am like more into reading at the moment um i'm really enjoying the book that i'm currently reading so i'm hoping that like i'm coming out of the slump um i feel like as well with december it's the sort of time of year where i feel like i'm really in the mood to read it's just because of the like coziness i guess of the time of year and it just puts me in the mood to read so Hopefully December will be better. Um, let's talk through the three books that I read during November. Um, I will, of course, first of all, run you through my statistics. So yes, in November, I read a total of three books and those three books were equal to 1,163 pages, which is an average of 39 pages a day, which was pretty much the all I could manage during the month. I don't know, I, I enjoyed the books that I read. Um, as you can see, I had two, four, star books and one five star book but I just just was not just was not really in the mood to read uh, and those ratings are an average of 4.3 stars per book. In terms of genre I read two fantasy books and one was a romance and for media two of the books that I read were physical and one was an ebook. For format everything that I read was a standard novel and for my age categories, two of the books I read were published as adult and one was a middle grade. And finally, for my TBR, like how I've acquired the books that I read during the month, two of the books I have hauled previous to 2022 and one of the books was a Kindle Unlimited book. So that's that done. Let's talk about what the books are and what I thought of them. So the first book I read in November was Restless Slumber by KJ Sutton, which is the second book in the Fortuna Swan series. And this is an adult fantasy romance about Fortuna Swan, who is a living nightmare. In the first book, she makes a deal with the king of the Unseelie court, Colith, and they basically make a deal to be mates uh, because her brother is missing and she wants to find him and Colith has said he will help her find him. So she finds her brother pretty quickly in the first book and then a lot of other things happen that was very very reminiscent of A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. So this book and I did rate five stars. I really really enjoyed it. It was just a little bit of a slow going for me just because of me not being in the mood to read really um, and I was worried that my kind of slump would affect how I felt about the book but I did really enjoy it. So this one in particular takes place more so in our world. The thing about uh, the Fortuna Swan books is it's like um, like a contemporary fantasy so it's set in our world but then you do also see like the Unseelie court quite a lot as well and there's all these like fantastical creatures like fae and werewolves that are like in Fortuna's world and of course she herself is a living nightmare which um is exactly what it sounds like um so she if she touches someone um skin to skin she can um get like a sense of all their deepest darkest fears um and then she can then use that as a sort of weapon against them and like make them shit their pants um so she is a very very powerful creature um but she, she's got a lot of trauma um and she's kind of trying to find herself in this world and especially in the second book we are sort of navigating her relationship with Colith as well um so at the start of the first book they pretty much immediately get married and it's a deal out of convenience like she really hates Colith and then as the story goes on especially in this book we sort of see them start to develop a little bit of a friendship. I really enjoyed this I loved the plot and how different it was to the first book. I think my thing about the first book is it was a lot shorter and it also felt a little bit naive and as well it was really really similar to Akatar um, in terms of like the plot there is a series of trials that Fortuna has to do whereas this one it sort of starts to take on its own story and the characters stand a little bit more on their own 
Um, and I really enjoyed seeing more of Fortuna and Collis' relationship. Of course, this being a fantasy romance, there are smut scenes in it. And my one complaint is that I wish that there was more of them or that they went into a little bit more depth, I suppose. I'm hoping that with future books, um, we have a little bit more of the smut in there. This is the sort of romance series where the smut could be fade to black and it wouldn't have any effect on the story or my enjoyment of it really. Whereas the smut scenes in there, I feel like they're not really adding much to the story or like adding much to my enjoyment of it because they're so short and like nothing really seems to be happening. <laughs> um, I don't know if that makes me sound thirsty or what, but I just want more smut in, the, in these books because I really enjoy KJ Sutton's writing and I really love seeing the world that she's crafted um, and seeing all these different characters and how they interact with each other. So I'm really looking forward to picking up book three. Um, I really want to try and get to it soon. I left this a little bit too long um, from the first book. I read the first book back in February and there isn't really a catch up between the books. You know how sometimes um, an author will kind of write in a recap um, to the first few couple of chapters in the book to kind of help you remember what happened in the first one. There is none of that in here. It picks up immediately after the where the first book left off. And I don't enjoy that because I was a little bit lost at the beginning. But once we sort of moved on early on, I suppose, it was a little bit easier to process because the plot of this is kind of quite separate to the first one. It was just trying to remember exactly who some characters were and kind of where their allegiances lay. But I did really enjoy it, of course, five stars. So um, yeah, I can't wait to see what happens in book three. The second book that I read in November was Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan, which is of course the second book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. So this is a fantasy middle grade series. It's pretty, pretty well known. Um, I'm like one of the last people on earth to have not read this yet. So in this one, Percy is again on a bit of a quest. It's a very standard kind of chosen one quest type format um, story, but I really enjoy it because it's quite funny and it's really quite adventurous and it's fun as well. Whereas there are some other books that I've read recently, Cough Cough Fairy Tale by Stephen King, um, where it had that kind of chosen one quest format and I just found it really boring and overdone. Whereas this, although it kind of follows that same standard format, that the first book kind of has. Like it was interesting and it was new. I love seeing like all the mythology as well from ancient Greece thrown in there. So if you have never heard of this series or you don't really know what it's about, Percy Jackson is a half-blood, which is essentially a demigod. He is the son of Poseidon and a normal human. And he goes to camp half-blood, learns all about what being a half-blood entails. And then he goes on a quest to kind of save the world essentially and I feel like that's going to be a pretty standard format in all of the books in this series but I enjoy the way that it's told. I love the mythology that's thrown in there and the twists that Rick Wilde and puts on it. I just find this series really really fun and easy to digest. I read this while I had Covid so it was just a nice quick simple book to read that I didn't have to focus too much on um, while I wasn't very well. Considering as well it's a fairly old um, middle grade series. It lives up to the test of time as well. So there are some books that are quite published quite a while ago that kind of may be a bit problematic or whatever, whereas this does not have any of that in it. And I feel like it is going to be a timeless thing. I also really love that this has a lot of disability rep in it, Percy and like all of the other Half-Bloods are dyslexic. Um, and I feel like, although I don't have dyslexia, if I was a kid with dyslexia, like it would be, it would, it would just be so refreshing to see a character like so blatantly on page and like the main character have the same like disability that you do. Um, I feel like dyslexia is one of those disabilities that is really really overlooked even though it's like really quite common and a lot of people do like have it. So to see like a main character and so many of the side characters as well because all of the Half-Bloods have dyslexia it's a thing. The way they explain it is a kind of a bit okay. Uh, it's because they're kind of more in tune to reading ancient Greek rather than like English um, but they do still have dyslexia regardless and Percy has ADHD as well and um, like which are two things that I feel like are really quite common and um, to have been a kid at the time of like reading this like and to see that representation would have been great if I had it obviously I don't um, but I, I feel like the representation is done quite well as someone you know I, I don't know I, I could be speaking for a community like and be completely wrong <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that this is representation in it for a book that was written like in the early 2000s um, and you don't see stuff like that in quite old series whereas it, I feel like books that are written today um, 
people are a lot more aware of like what they're writing about and there's a lot more representation in general so I, I, I just feel like it's it's nice to have that in a series that was is, is so old but I'm really excited to um carry on with the series um I'm probably gonna wait until um Rose Patreon book club for this gets to book three before I continue on with it in December Rose Patreon are starting a like buddy read read along book club thing of all the Percy Jackson books um in preparation for the very new one that I think is coming out September 2023 um so I will read book three when the guys like get to that book because obviously I, I don't want to reread book one and two since I've read them so recently but I will be reading all of the Percy Jackson books that I kind of had intended to anyway and I'm also really really excited for the Disney Plus series as well that'll be coming out I don't know when it's coming out I don't know if we have a date yet I feel like they're still announcing castings and they're still filming it and everything um but I think season one will probably just follow like the first book but I'm really really looking forward to that and seeing like all the characters on screen I'm already starting to like picture them as their new actors i i have seen i know that there's, there's movies for the first book and this book but and i have seen the first one very long time ago so i don't really remember it i just know that it's notoriously bad and i don't think i've seen the book for the sea of monsters but i i'm already like picturing the new actors as the faces of the characters while i'm reading the book as well which is really fun but this is just such a fun one um in the series and um yeah i'm really really excited to carry on with it it's just i'm gonna have to wait a little bit while but you know me um i'm really bad at carrying on this series anyway so regardless of like whether or not i was joining in with rose patreon book club um i probably would have left it until maybe like june next year so probably the book club will will keep me to it and make me read these books um in some sort of close capacity um but yeah i am really looking forward to carrying on with it and then the last book that i read in november was her soul for revenge by harley larue which is an adult paranormal fantasy very very erotic book where a girl makes a deal with the demon to get revenge um so i read the first one i think it was back in september and i absolutely loved it and i just could not get over like all the vibes it's very like mature twilight almost it's got this small town setting and it's very dark and like spooky i don't even know how to describe it but like the setting is fantastic and i think harley larue has got like, like down to a t however in this book i rated it four stars i i liked it um i just i feel like it was i don't know I, the fit the right <laughs> let's start again so with the thing about this book is um I feel like it was trying to outdo the first one and it is very very brutal and I feel like it was doing that for the sake of being brutal um there are a lot of trigger warnings with this book they are at the front of the book if you wanted to look them up as well uh, it's probably on goodreads somewhere um but the, like it is so kinky like and in a very very dark way almost um like there's blood play gun play knife play like there's just all sorts of stuff in it and i feel like it was trying to one-up the previous book and it was just a little bit over the top for me i was just a bit like okay we get it you two are messed up in the head <laughs> um mm, okay so in this book we're following two different characters which are juniper and zane uh zane is still the demon in the relationship um and juniper was uh captured by the cult when she was younger the cult that features in like all three of the books i suppose and she wants to get revenge on the cult so she makes a deal with zane and he will help her get revenge and as time goes on they kind of fall in love with each other um but yeah it's very very brutal and i feel like it was brutal for the sake of it and i feel like the relationship went from nothing to 100 from page one which is fine like you can have sex without having a relationship with somebody but i just feel like there wasn't much chemistry between them at first and then the chemistry came afterwards and i was just a bit like okay <laughs> i also didn't really like the fact that this is the same plot as the first book just from the different perspectives everything like we had almost seen before we knew how it was going to end and i feel like that took away my enjoyment and my excitement because with the although it's like an erotic novel there is a plot and i really really enjoy the plot to it unlike fortuna swan if the smut wasn't in this it would affect your enjoyment of the book and the smut does add to the story whereas with like fortuna swan i feel like the smut could be taken out of it and it would be the exact same thing so i, I enjoy the smut in it it was just very like okay 
chill out like there is no need to be this angsty i don't know i i would have rated it three stars but i do corpile um and so the other elements of the story that i enjoyed like the atmosphere for example and um, brought it up to a four star but if this was written on pure enjoyment alone it probably would have been about a three three point five i just did not like it as much as the first book and i found it quite disappointing um i'm really hoping that the third book who will follow um another couple and i'm assuming it'll be the same plot i'm hoping i'll enjoy that more because i think i like those two characters a little bit more than i enjoyed juniper and zane um and i kind of know that it's going to be the exact same plot now like i i'd guess that anyway before i started this one but i didn't realize it would be quite so much like the exact same plot just from a different perspective um so i'm hoping as well with the third book because the couple that are going to be in it we didn't see a lot of them in this in the first book and the second book that it will be a lot more to learn about the story about the world and the different characters as well so i'm hoping that it'll be more interested on that side instead of just like pure smut <laughs> that i didn't really like that much so yeah i i was quite disappointed with this one i'm definitely going to read like other books from harley larue um maybe just because it's the same series i was just a little bit like been there done that um she's written a few other books that i'm interested in reading that are i think they're more contemporary than like the paranormal horrorness of it all um but i i enjoy the like gob smacking brutal um smut that are in these books because it's just like jaw dropping you're like i can't believe like she actually wrote that <laughs> But it's good it's very interesting but yes very very triggering uh if you are kind of sensitive to any of the sort of topics that are in the story um so i definitely recommend checking up a content warning list um before diving into it uh especially if you're new to reading smut and erotica i feel like that now that i've reached this point of reading smut like nothing will ever be quite as dramatic as it um and anything else that i read will kind of be like a step down so i feel like this is my limit anything more than that not for me um and everything below i'm like okay i know i can take that <laughs> but yeah i did really really enjoy it um no i didn't i did really i did really enjoy it especially towards the end but it was just a bit like at the start it was very very tedious uh so yeah that was her soul for a so this is a very very quick wrap up for me these are the two physical books that i read in the month it's obviously a very tiny little stack um but you know not every month can be 10 plus books this is kind of typically what i would have read in a month before um i did booktube i kind of started to be able to increase the number of books that i read per month during like lockdown uh and now that i like i'm in work full time and it's just a very busy time of the year i just feel like i've had to sort of take a step back of it um and i feel like three books is not that interesting to talk about in a video for you guys but like at the same time it means that i have a little bit more time to talk about those books i suppose instead of trying to squeeze 10 books into like one wrap up and the wrap up is going to be like an hour long <laughs> but I, i'm hopeful for december um i am currently reading tales from the shadow hunter academy by cassandra clare i started this at the end of november this is such a long book like i know this is going to take me a little while to finish um however this is for by the angel long so i need to finish it by the live show if i want to join in with that because um I will get spoiled otherwise but i am i am about 250 pages into this so far and i'm really enjoying it but obviously i'll talk more about it in my december wrap up yeah i have a few other books on my december tbr uh, that i'm hoping to get to i hope to read more than three books in this month i really really want to do that cat books vlog so hopefully um i'll get to it um but i yeah i just i don't know i just oops i've just like not been dedicating as much time to reading recently um as i have earlier this year but it's because i've been spending more time on my other hobbies um you know if i read 10 books in a month it's because i'm spending most of my time reading and i'm spending less time doing the other things that i enjoy which is like listening to music watching butchie watching tv stuff like that you know i don't really go out anywhere i'm very much of a recluse <laughs> but i'm hoping to read a little bit more in december because i i feel like i've got the itch to read again so <laughs> i guess you'll have to find out what i read in december in january oh my god this is the last wrap up of the year oh my gosh i didn't even know realize that until now this is the last wrap up of 2022 like but obviously i'll have my december one but you will see that in january that is wild that is wild so that is it for this video guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please do give it a big thumbs up let me know in the comments down below what you read in november if you read any of the books that i talked about and what you thought of them if you haven't already and you would like to be please do consider subscribing or post a new video every single week and that's it for me today, guys.
Bye.